Hi! In this redo of week 2, what we're going to do is to basically implement the same counter as we did in week 1, but exclusively from the debugger and from a test-driven perspective. So let's see what this means. We'll go and open System Browser. What we'll do is define the test class first. This is the idea of the test-driven development. So save that. Now we'll write our first test, so test counter is set and read. So what will this test do? It will create a counter, so temporary variable C, to which we'll assign counter new. Then we'll assign 7 to the value of uh, count instance variable. And then we'll check that C count is indeed equal to 7. So you can see that counter is emphasized, we haven't defined count double dash, we haven't defined count. So nothing should work basically, but we'll see. Counter unknown viable, please correct. So counter would like to define a new class. We'd like to define it uh, with uh, count instance viable and press OK. So you can see that we've got our counter class that's created there with uh, instance viable count. And now if we run our test, we can see that the method count double dash has not been understood. So this is the debugger and basically this is the execution stack, this is the body of the method that is being executed and those are the different variables. So if I go to the counter you can see that this is the counter, row, we can see that count is equal to nil because we haven't set it up. So we can create, we can click on the create button to create the method count double dash, go to counter and what we'll do is go to accessing, OK. So this is the setter we'll like. So this is fine, we can press proceed. Then it doesn't understand the next count, the getter. So we can create it, counter. Once again in the accessing protocol, OK. Count will return count. That's great. So proceed. The test is red, but if we click on it, it's green, so perfect. And if we go and have a look at the counter class, we now have our setter and getter for the count instance variable. So that's perfect. Now, if you remember correctly, we had a class method that helped us uh, choose the starting value. So we used it as starting at double dash five. We won't need this link, but we'd like to assert that the count is indeed equal to five. So let's save this. It does not understand the starting at message, but that's fine. We'll define it right now. Click on it. Instant of counter class did not understand starting at. So we'll create it. In the count class, under the instance creation protocol, press OK. And we'll have to implement it. So basically, what does starting at, well, what will starting at do? It will create a counter. Create a counter, SQL counter new. Then it will assign the value an integer to the instance variable count. And it will return this counter. So let's save this. Press proceed. And we can see that our oh, is green. We still have some code there that's not updated, but if I go back, there it is. It everything's understood and everything's green. Now, another thing that we would like to implement is the increment and decrement, so test counter increment. We'll go there and do increment increment. And we would like count to be equal to 7. So let's we'll save this. We'll run it. Increment was not understood. This is normal since we haven't defined it. So go over to the create button. We would like to create the method increment in the counter class under the operation protocol. OK. Should be implemented. So what should our increment method do? It should do count double dash equal count plus one. Save this. Press proceed. Our method is green. That's cool. Now we can do the same thing with decrement. Decrement and there it is counter decrement. We'll save it, run this method. We have to create the method decrement in the counter class. Go to operation, press OK. Uh, decrement, so in the same way we created increment, we'll just do count 
is equal to count minus one. We'll save this, press proceed. So our test isn't right, that's because I have not changed the actual value I would like it to be. I would like it to be equal to three. Whoop. I would like it to be equal to three. So I can change it right there from the debugger, press com S and press proceed. And all our tests are green. And what you can see is we have only basically developed the test. And we still have all the backend functionalities from the counter class. So count, count, decrement, increment, and everything is correctly organized. And all of this was made from within the debugger. So this is one of the strengths of Faro. The debugger is a working environment and you can really boost your productivity by doing this.